Hey there guys, this is Eric from Hovercast TCG, bringing you guys another deck breakdown and analysis video. So today, we're going to be looking at Quad Lapras, a deck that I was able to take to the top 8 at the Puerto Rico special event this past weekend, and recently, ever since I posted my list on the Facebook group Hey Fonte, I've been getting a lot of questions about the deck, uh, so I decided instead of continuously answering the questions over and over there, I would just make an all-encompassing video explaining how I created the deck, why I play certain cards, uh, its matchups, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so first, how I created the deck. So I'm sure everyone knows that Carl Peters took his version of Quad Lapras to a top four finish at Malmo Regionals in Sweden, I want to say two weeks ago. Uh, so that's why I first saw the deck. I'm sure everyone first saw the deck there too. Um, and I saw that he played Max Elixir and Energy Switch, and I immediately dismissed that deck as bad because Max Elixir and Energy Switch just did not belong in the deck. Um, but after I saw my friend Azul Griego playing a Puzzle of Time variant of Lapras uh, on his stream, I decided, hey, you know, this deck actually could be pretty good because Puzzle of Time just fit really, really well with all the disruption that you're playing. Um, so I messaged Azul for his list, uh, which was probably like 8 to 10 cards different than mine, I want to say. I don't exactly remember the list that he sent me, but it was pretty significantly different. Um, but I used his list, basically, to build this. So I played Decidueye at a cup uh, last weekend, and I did really poorly with it, and I decided, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to work on this Quad Lapras list for the rest of the for the rest of the week, I'm going to play it at Puerto Rico. This deck seems really strong. It beats Assiduae. It beats almost everything in the meta. I, I'm going to play this deck. So from there, I just decided to work on this deck for the rest of the week. Um, and luckily, one of my friends, uh, Benjamin Pham, actually was working on a Quad Lapras deck as well. And we compared lists, and it turned out we were only like four or three or four cards different from each other. So from there, we just decided to work on the deck a ton and test with each other the entire week and figure out basically the best opt the most optimal list for the deck um so before i go into the list i also want to shout out jimmy mcclure who i tested a ton with this week uh, i basically honed this list with him as well he got really sick of playing against quad lapras so i'm sorry for having to play this deck so much against you uh but i really appreciate you testing with me as well as xander perot uh i compared lists with him he actually took a very similar list to a second place finish at his league cup uh this past weekend which secured him his invite to the world championships uh, as well as everyone else in that group chat that I worked on that list uh, with. Uh, you guys all know who you are. Um, there are too many people in that group chat to name. Um, but yeah, that's basically who I worked on the list with. Uh, and again, also shout out to Azul Griego. Uh, go, got, go check out his stream, guys. I'll leave his link uh, in the description. That's where I found my initial... Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? My initial... The initial list that I used, basically, for Lapras, I got from Azul. So, <laughs> sorry, I had a brain fire for a second. But yeah, go check out his uh, stream. He streams almost every day. Uh, he's got a really good stream going. Um, definitely check him out. But now, let's go into the list and why this deck is good. So, obviously, Quad Lapras, you play four Lapras. What is, makes this card so good? So first, you have the first attack, Collect, which just says, draw three cards. That might seem really, really weak, but... In this deck, that's actually probably the best attack you could have. Uh, collect basically lets you draw into all of your disruption cards, uh, as well as get you double puzzles. So let's say you have one puzzle in hand, you need to get another puzzle. You use collect, and you have a really good shot of hitting it. Um, collect basically, it's what sets up the deck. It, it's what's allow you allows you to draw into all of your disruption uh, that you would otherwise have a hard time uh, getting, and you would have to play a bunch of draw supporters instead. Uh, so collect is probably one if not the main MVPs of this deck. Uh, then we have Blizzard Burn. This Pokemon uh, cannot attack during your next turn, but it does 160 damage. Uh, this attack is alright. Uh, basically, you want to use this attack after an Ice Beam GX, um, or you want to use it to just one-shot like an Evil Tall that doesn't have a um, Fury Belt on it, or, you know, a Dark Ride with a Kukui, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's basically used to just neutralize threats that have a bunch of energy on it that you haven't been able to remove. Um, besides that, it's not really a great attack. It's not something I used a ton. It was really just to get rid of their energy and just deny them their resources. Uh, and then we have Ice Beam GX, which is another really, really solid attack. So basically, like Blizzard Burn, Ice Beam GX is always going to be used on something that has a bunch of energy powered up. So what you want to do is you want to just Lysander that turn, or if they have it in the active already, just Ice Beam GX and then follow it up with a Blizzard Burn. That's going to knock out every single thing in the format. And you're going to take off all of their energy, or most of their energy, uh, on their field, uh, 
and just completely neutralize their threats. Uh, so Ice Beam GX is another really solid attack, uh, and that uh, I'd say Ice Beam and Collect are the reasons Lapras is such a good card. Um, so we play four of those, obviously. That's really all we want to do. You can kind of think of this deck as like the new Whale Lord, I guess, where you just have really big, beefy water type uh, basic, uh, and you're just trying to stall and take prizes, uh, stall and deny your opponent from taking prizes. Excuse me. Uh, and then we also play one Wobbuffet. Fett. So. One Wobbuffet is really good because it acts as a seventh prize. So we only play one, so if they knock it out, we don't care if they knock it out because they're still going to have to take three knockouts on our Lapras. So them knocking out Wobbuffet is just a useless prize for them. Uh, so it's really great if they ever take a knockout on it. You actually really want them to take a knockout because it really doesn't hurt you at all. Um, as well as Wobbuffet gives you a really, really good matchup against the Sidui GX. Obviously, you already have a really good matchup against it because of all the disruption that you play in Decidueye takes two energy uh, attachments to knock um, to start attacking. Um, but Wobbuffet also gets around Vileplume, so it allows you to play all of your disruption cards like Hammers, um, Versus Seekers, Puzzles, etc. Um, which are also really good against Decidueye, because again, they need two energy attachments to knock you out, or to even start attacking, not just knock you out. They need a lot more to knock you out, uh, as I'll explain later. But... Wallafet is a really, really good card. Uh, you definitely want to play one of these in the deck. Um, it's it's really solid. I highly recommend playing it. So that's all we have for Pokemon. You don't need any more Pokemon. You shouldn't run any more Pokemon. People have been asking me, why don't you play Manaphy? Why don't you play Articuno? C cards like that. Why don't you play Glaceon? You don't want any of those. They're really easy to knock out. Uh, you don't need to stream Blizzard Burn, so you don't need Manaphy. Um to like switch between Laprases, like because the point of the deck is not to keep on taking prizes and attacking. You're only attacking to deny your opponent the ability to attack and take knockouts themselves. So you don't need to stream Blizzard Burn. So Manaphy is not good. Articuno, I don't even know why you would consider playing Articuno. It just doesn't belong in the deck at all. Uh, Glaceon, you know, it, it's good against Vesuquin, I guess, but you don't run Max Elixir because Max Elixir is bad in the deck. Um, because, again, you're not attacking. You're not trying to attack. You're disrupting them. Uh, so it takes three energy, uh, three turns and three energy to power up a Glaceon, and by then they'll probably have, be able to knock you out with Vesselquin. Plus, Vesselquin plays Mew EX anyways, so Glaceon's kind of useless. You kind of just take the loss to Vesselquin. So there's really no other attacker that you should run in the deck. Um, all you need is five Pokemon. That's it. Uh, so now let's go on to the supporters. So first we play 4M. Uh... A lot of people were playing Judge, including par Carl Peters. Uh, I don't understand why. Well, I do understand why they didn't play it, because they didn't play Puzzle of Time, which means that their lists were suboptimal. Uh, you want to play 4N, because you're not going to be taking a lot of prizes with this deck, uh, and you want as many cards as you can, because if you run N, you get six cards instead of four with Judge, and that gives you a better chance of drawing in a double puzzle, as well as Collect. So you'll have nine cards, and then you draw again, so that's ten cards in hand if they don't end you. The chances of you not having double puzzle or any resource that you need, like a Team Flare Grunt, Skull Grunt, Hammer, etc. Like, you'll have that, basically, every time you end. So, 4N was an absolute must, uh, especially because you don't really want to play Professor Sycamore, which is why we only play 3. Because once you have a big hand, like 10, 13, 14 cards, whatever, with Lapras, because you're going to be collecting every single turn, you don't want a Sycamore, because you're going to be getting rid of so many resources. So we only play 3. I've even considered going down to 2 Sycamore, um, because you really want... Past turn one, you really don't want a Sycamore that much. If you're Sycamore, you're getting rid of a bunch of stuff that you really don't want to get rid of otherwise. Um, we played three Sycamore because, you know, if you play against Item Lock and they go first and they get Vile Plume out, it's nice to have Sycamore just to be able to draw through your deck. But three Sycamore is probably the most you want to play. I've even considered going down to two. I probably will go down to two to fit some other cards. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to play 4 Sycamore, it just doesn't belong in this deck, because you have so many resources that you just don't want to get rid of, and you're always going to have a big hand. Um, so now, we play 4 Team Flare Grunt. So, yeah, <laughs> this is where the disruption really starts to come in. So basically, every turn, if you're not playing N, you're basically going to want to play a Disruption Supporter. So we run 4 of these guys, because you want to prevent your opponent from attacking as long as possible. Um, unfortunately, Zerosic doesn't exist in the format anymore, so you can't really attack energy... Uh, from the bench with your supporters, um, but that's where Crushing Hammers and Enhanced Hammers come in. But Team Flare Grunt uh, is really, really good in this deck. If they ever even start attacking, you're just going to Team Flare Grunt them and start getting rid of their energy. Uh, four is an absolute must. At one point, I was down to two Team Flare Grunt in the list. I think Azul's list that he sent me only had two Team Flare Grunt, and that was just a huge mistake. This card is so good. 
play four of these for sure. Um, so now we'll go on to the next uh, disruption supporter that we play, which is Team Skullground. And Team Skullground is so good in this deck, especially because, uh, especially against Decidueye, because Decidueye, what they're going to do to recover all the energy that you um, that you discarded is they're going to Hollow Hunt GX. Uh, and get back two, maybe three energy, if there's three in there. So what you want to do is the turn that they hollow hunt, you skull grunt, and get rid of those energy again. Uh, it's really strong and really annoying for the Decidueye player. You don't want to be caught in that situation where that happens. Um, Team Skullgrunt is also really good when you're able to get rid of all their energy on the field at the same time with Crushing Hammers and Enhanced Hammer. So if you're ever able to do that, plus Team Skullgrunt away energy in their hand, they're screwed. They're not going to have any energy in play or to be or to be able to be played unless they have a Sycamore and, you know, they can get more cards in their deck. Um, but if they're doing that, they're also getting rid of other resources in their hand. So Team Skullgrunt is an absolute must in this deck. I love it. This is probably the first deck that I think Team Skullgrunt actually makes a lot of sense in. Um, so we play two of them, and I think it's just a really solid card. Uh, next, we will go to Lysander. We play two Lysander pretty standard almost every deck plays two maybe three lysander not much more you need to say about this card card it's really good um every deck should be playing some okay and now we're gonna have all of our one of supporters so first we have hex maniac hex maniac also just makes our decidueye matchup a lot better um one because when you have a lapras with a fury belt on it you have 230 damage for a decidueye to knock you out they need three feather arrows plus an attack to oko you in one turn so if you play Hex Maniac, you prevent them from ever getting those Feather Arrows off that turn, uh, which means that they're not going to be able to one-shot your Lapras, which means it survives for another turn, which means you have a chance to get an Ice Beam off, or you know another chance to get rid of all their energy. Uh, plus, Hex Maniac, also against them, uh, allows you to use your Crushing Hammers and your Enhanced Hammers, which gets rid of their energy. So Hex Maniac is really, really good against Decidueye, but it's also really solid against Volcanion, which would otherwise be a really bad... Well, it is a really bad matchup. But with Hex Maniac, Hex Maniac makes the matchup a lot better uh, because they need four seam ups to knock out a Lapras with a Fury Belt. Um, so if you're able to Hex Maniac, you basically say your Lapras is going to survive another turn, which gives you another chance to get it potentially powered up, which means that you can knock out their threat uh, that they have that they're build that they're building up. However, if Volcanion just goes a baby Volcanion and just starts powering that up, it's kind of tough because baby if if they're smart. They're just really going to play some baby Volcanians. They're not going to overbench because the way you beat Volcanian, actually, is just by Lysandering up one of their bench Pokemon that doesn't have a Floatstone on it uh, and force them to burn their escape ropes, etc. Uh, Olympia. And you're basically stalling for time to power up a Lapras in the back where you can one shot their threats um, and get rid of their energy. So Hex Maniac really helps against that if they do overbench. Uh, and even if they don't, it prevents them from steaming up using Hoopa to set up, etc. Hex Maniac is a really good card. Uh, you don't really need more than one, um, because you only need that one turn uh, of using it, especially against Decidueye, but it's a really solid card otherwise. Um, so now we play one Olympia. Uh, so a lot of people ask me, why don't I play Pokemon Ranger? Well, Pokemon Ranger is just a bad card. You really don't want to use it, um, because you don't really need to stream Blizzard Burns in this deck, and it's just not... It's not something that the deck aims to do. It's a disruption deck. It's not an attacking deck where you have to attack every single turn. Um, but Olympia does give you an option to stream Blizzard Burns if you really need to. So you can Olympia into, let's say, your Wob with a Floatstone or another Lapras that has three energy onto it and keep on Blizzard Burning. Plus, the reason I play Olympia over Pokemon Ranger for something that allows you to stream Blizzard Burns is because it also heals. And it's a switching card. So Olympia just has a lot more utility than Pokemon Ranger. And... It, it's just a better card. Don't play Pokemon Ranger in this deck. If you're going to play something to do uh, to allow you to stream Blizzard Burns, Olympia is the way to go. Uh, now we have Professor Kukui. Uh, so I actually didn't play Professor Kukui in my list uh, that I was testing before Puerto Rico. I was actually playing Team Rocket's Handiwork. Um, but Professor Kukui uh, actually ended up doing, uh, helping me a lot in Puerto Rico. Um, I only played this because I couldn't find a Team Rocket's Handiwork uh, <laughs> for Puerto Rico, which is kind of funny. Uh, I don't own one in real life. Uh, now I do. I, I bought one immediately after the tournament, so I'm not in that situation again. But I'm actually glad that I play, played Professor Kukui, because Professor Kukui is really solid against Turbo Dark, uh, as well as Tauros GX, because you can't... Otherwise, you cannot one-shot their Dark Rai uh, or their Tauros without a Fury Belt, uh, because the most you can do is 170 damage uh, with, you know, 160 with Blizzard Burn plus 10 from Fighting Fury Belt. 
so Professor Kakui allowed you to get around that. Uh, and I ended up playing Turbo Dark at, at Puerto Rico, and I don't think I would have beaten it otherwise if I didn't have Kakui. Um, Kakui also allows you to draw two cards, uh, which, you know, it may seem not that good, but on turns where your only other supporter is a Sycamore and you don't have an N and you need to just draw more cards, Kakui can give you that option without having to discard your hand. So it's actually not a bad supporter, and I probably will end up keeping it in the list uh, going forward. I'm probably just finding room for Team Rocket's handiwork otherwise. Um, now that I'm actually talking about it, I'll just talk about Team Rocket's handiwork and why I chose to play it. Uh, Team Rocket's handiwork is actually really good in the mirror. Um, it, the mirror basically comes down to who has more energy left uh, at the end of the game. You're just basically energy disrupting them the entire time, and whoever ends up with more energy is going to win because you needed to start attacking, uh, and you can't collect if you don't have energy either, uh, and you want to just continuously do that. Uh, but Handiwork also gets rid of their energy, can get rid of their Super Rod, can get rid of their Grunts, etc. Um, so Team Rocket's Handiwork is really good in the mirror, as well as against people that just overuse their resources against Lapras. You can just deck them out really easily with Handiwork. Um, I think both of those cards, Kukui and Handiwork, deserve a spot in the list. Uh, I will probably cut a th the third Sycamore for it. Um, but yeah, so that's why I played Kukui over Handiwork, because I didn't own a Handiwork. But now that I played Kukui, I actually thought it was pretty good. Uh, and then finally, we have Delinquent. Uh, Delinquent is really solid uh, in letting you win the Stadium War. You play four Rough Seas, but you want to have your Rough Seas out by the end of the game. Um, so Delinquent helps you win the Stadium War as against Ray Rayquaza, where they need Stadiums against you, Decidueye. Um, let's see, who else plays Stadiums? Uh, Evil Tall, you're going to win the Stadium War against them, but just in case you can't hit your Rough Seas to get rid of their Parallel, stuff like that. Um, so Delinquent's really good for that, as well as it punishes bad players that don't play around Delinquent. Uh, putting yourself, uh, putting your opponent uh, in a position where they have a zero card hand, going up against a Lapras deck that's going to constantly be discarding their resources is brutal, because they're not going to be able to draw into those resources again unless they top deck a Sycamore. Um, so Delinquent basically punishes your opponent even more in this deck, because you're going to be stripping them of all their board resources too, which a lot of other decks that play Delinquent don't have the ability to. So Delinquent's an absolute must of, uh, must one of in this deck. Um, I really liked it. It's just a really good card. I don't really like decks without Delinquent. Uh, I end up playing a lot of decks without Delinquent and regretting that I don't play Delinquent because it just allows you another win condition that you wouldn't otherwise have. Um, I highly recommend you play this card. It's really good. Um, and then we play 4 versus Seeker. That's standard. Everyone should play 4 vs. Seeker unless you're playing Decidueye. Card is so good. Especially with this uh, in this deck where you play 4 Skullgrunt, uh, 4 Flare Grunt, excuse me, and 2 Skullgrunt. So it allows you to have even more disruption cards. Really, really good card. Don't even consider going down to like 3 or anything. 4 vs. Seeker is a must. Okay. So now we've gone over all the supporters and uh, vs. Seekers, I guess. So now we'll go over the items in the deck. So first, we'll start off with 4 Crushing Hammer. Uh, like I said, this is a disruption deck. You're going to want a Crushing Hammer get rid of all their energy. Uh, you play 4 Puzzle of Time to get the Crushing Hammer back. Um, crushing Hammer plus Skull Grunt plus Flare Grunt. Like, any of those combinations, really, really strong. 4 Crushing Hammer is an absolute must. Uh, and like I said, we play for Puzzle of Time. So Puzzle of Time is really what put this deck over the top, in my opinion. This card is so, so much better than Max Elixir and Energy uh, Switch. I don't know why Carl Peters came to that conclusion that Energy Switch and Max Elixir was the better uh, version of the deck. It's really not. Puzzle of Time is the way to go. Puzzle of Time allows you to just play all these cards over and over, like Crushing Hammers, uh, Enhanced Hammers, Gets you energy back if you have a Lapras discarded. If you don't have a Super Rod, allows you to play another Skull Grunt or Flare Grunt if you don't have a Versus Seeker. Allows you to get Wobbuffet back if you need. Allows you to get your Switch back. It's so good. This card is probably one of the biggest reasons that Lapras, uh, Quad Lapras works. So don't play Max Elixir. Don't play Energy Switch. Puzzle of Time is the way to go. This card is so good. I cannot, I cannot state like that enough. It, it's so good. <laughs> um... Okay, so now we have three Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, this should make a lot of sense. We play only basic Pokemon, so Fighting Fury Belt obviously fits in there. And we're trying to deny our opponent from taking prizes, so why would we not want to give our, our Pokemon 40 more HP? Uh, Fighting Fury Belt's really good as well because it gives Lapras 10 more attacking damage, which means they can one-shot 170 HP Pokemon if they don't have a Fighting Fury Belt of their own, such as Evil Tolly X, uh, which could otherwise give you problem. 
problems, excuse me. Um, so fighting fury belt was an absolute must. Three is the perfect amount because you're really only ever going to have three, uh, three Lapras uh, in play. Uh, ever in the entire game because you know they need to knock out three you only play four because you know you want to have the most odds to have them uh, to hit them because you don't really play many ways to search out your Pokemon um, but speaking of searching your Pokemon we play to nest ball uh, so you might wonder why we don't play ultra ball because there aren't a lot of resources that you want to get rid of plus all you need to do is just get Pokemon on the field so nest ball just says search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it on your bench that's how you're getting Pokemon in your field. That plus collect, you're just going to collect in your Pokemon. You really don't need to worry about having your Lapras knocked out early unless you're playing against Vestaquen or Lorantis. But if you're playing against those decks, you're going to lose anyways. You cannot beat those two decks. Um, so Nest Ball is the perfect card for this deck. Uh, Benjamin Pham actually played three in his list. That was the one difference that we had. He played a third Nest Ball over the Kukui, uh, and he agrees that three Nest Ball really isn't needed. He just played it for insurance purposes. Um, two Nest Ball is really all you need. You're going to collect or draw and uh, collect into the Pokemon that you need, or you can just, you know, hit your Nest Balls. Uh, it's really good. I actually found myself using Nest Ball once every game, usually for a Wobbuffet, because again, if they knock it out, you don't care. It's a seventh prize, uh, and Wobbuffet is just a really good card in general. Uh, it allows you to put it up there with a Float Stone and just, you know, always have that to be able to retreat into. Uh, it's a really solid card. Uh, Nest Ball was the perfect card for this deck. Um, but if you don't play Wobbuffet for some reason, Dive Ball works just as well. Um, but with Wobbuffet, Nest Ball is clearly the superior option. Uh, and now we play two Enhanced Hammer. I actually play two different arts. Um, but yeah, we play two of this card. Uh, you want to play two because two makes your Mega Mewtwo and your Mega Rayquaza matchup a lot better because they're the two main decks that rely on double colorless energy, as well as Evil Tall. But Evil Tall is already a very, very favorable matchup. Um, so Double Enhanced Hammer really helps you run them out of energy, especially since Mega Rayquaza doesn't play Puzzle of Time uh, anymore. Uh, a lot of people have chosen to cut that for in favor of you know Special Charge and just Volcanion and more more basic energy. So by using Double Enhanced Hammer, you're basically able to limit the amount of attacks they're able to do, as well as against Mewtwo, limit their damage output. Because Mewtwo, otherwise, would actually be able to one-shot a Lapras, even if you have a Fighting Fury Belt uh, and only like one energy attached to it. So... Uh, Double Enhanced Hammer was a really, really good call. Uh, this was actually Benjamin's idea. I only had one originally, but Double Enhanced Hammer is something that I absolutely love after playing with it a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't go down uh, to one anymore. I think two is the perfect number for this deck. Uh, so now we're getting to our one of. So we play one Float Stone. Uh, again, this is mostly for Wobbuffet. Uh, you don't really want to ever put a Float Stone on a Lapras. You want to have a Fighting Fury Belt on it, but you can put it on a Lapras in like worst case scenarios. Um, but yeah, Floatstone is just mostly for uh, for Wobbuffet to give you some uh, switching pivots, as well as against you know Decidueye, so you can promote Wobbuffet, put the Floatstone on, and then be able to retreat into a Lapras later, and you know Ice Beam, whatever you need to do. Um, so yeah, you only play one Floatstone, as well as one Switch. You really don't ever need to switch with this car uh, with this deck. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've been sick for like the past week, uh, which is another reason why we haven't really had a lot of videos. Um, so I apologize. Um, but anyways, getting back into Switch. So you play one Switch because you don't really need to switch between Laprases ever. What, if you have a Lapras in the active, it's basically going to be there until it dies, if it dies. Um, but if they ever lie standard, like a bare Lapras that you just put down that doesn't have any energy, just you can switch right back into it, or you can even just attach and collect. Um, switch is just another way also to reset Blizzard Burn. So you can switch into, let's say, a Wobbuffet with your Float Stone, and then retreat into your Lapras and just Blizzard Burn again. Um, you don't really need more than one switch. Uh, you can always get it back with Puzzle of Time if you really need it. Um, yeah, one switch was the perfect number. I played two for a while, and I found I really wasn't ever using the second switch. Um, so, one was the perfect number. Uh, and then we have Super Odd. So we play one of these, uh, mostly to get your energy back. So if you ever have a really bad Sycamore where you have to get rid of, like, three energy or something, you can just get those energy back, because energy is the, w the way the deck functions, basically. Because you just need energy to attach to Lapras so you can collect. So the more energy you can have, the better. Um, so Super Rod helps with that. Super Rod also helps a lot with the bear, with the mirror match. Again, I'm sorry guys, I'm a little sick. <laughs> um, because again, the mirror comes down to who has more energy at the end of the game. And if you have your Super Rod, you just Super Rod back three energy, and there's three more energy that they have to get rid of somehow. So Super Rod was a really good card. Uh, it might seem a little superfluous because you know you don't really need it, I guess. 
uh, a lot of people will say, but it really helped in a lot of those situations where, you know, I had a bad Sycamore or against the Mirror, which I actually played in my winning in for Puerto Rico, uh, where Super Odd actually was the winning card for me because I just kept on getting energy back, and he didn't. So, yeah, Super Odd was really solid. Uh, I wouldn't play the deck without it. Um, so I think that's all of our one of. so now we'll go to our stadiums. Uh, four rough seas. And this should make a lot of sense. Um, Lapras is a big water type. We're trying to deny knockouts. Rough Seas heals your water types. Hey, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So, yeah, four Rough Seas is an absolute must. You want to win the Stadium War almost every time. You want to be able to just continuously heal yourself. Uh, rough Seas is also really, really good against the Situi. Because, like I said, they need three Feather Arrows uh, to knock out a Lapras with a Fury Belt. So the more uh, Feather Arrows you can heal, especially with Hex Maniac at the same time, you know, the less chance of them being able to knock out your Lapras. So four Rough Seas is an absolute must. You want to win the Stadium War. You want to heal your Pokemon as much as you can. It's, it's a great card. And then finally, we have 10 Water Energy. Uh, 10 Water Energy was the perfect count. You could probably go down to 9, um, but you really just want to draw in your Water Energy because, again, energy is what makes the deck work, so you can just continuously collect. So 10 Energy I found was great. I would almost always have one in my opening hand. I had enough to power up multiple Lapras, uh, especially with Super Odd. Uh, I was always hitting them when I needed to. Uh, 10 energy was the perfect count for me. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of scientific like math behind it. Like I didn't like perfectly calculate like oh this gives me this amount of odds. Um, like 10 energy just felt good when I was playing the deck. Uh, I never really messed with it. So <laughs> that's how I came to the 10 energy conclusion. Um, so yeah, that's quad lapis for you guys. Uh, now that we've looked at the deck, I'll briefly go over its matchups. Um, so yeah. First, we'll start out with the current best deck in the format, Decidueye. This deck is a really, really good Decidueye matchup. Uh, like I said, Decidueye needs two energy attachments to start attacking. You're just going to keep on getting rid of their energy attachments. Um, the only way Decidueye really wins uh, is if they have a Vileplume with a Flowstone on the bench, as well as a Pokemon, a different Pokemon, let's say like a Lugia or something, with a Flowstone on the active, and they start attaching to a bench um, Decidueye. Uh, that's the only way Decidueye really has a chance of winning because you can't get rid of their energy uh, without playing Hex Maniac um, because, you know, they'll have a Floatstone Pokemon on the active so you can't discard it with Flare Ground. Um, but if they ever start something like, you know, Lugia and they can't get a Floatstone on it or if they put a Vile Plume down and they don't have a Floatstone on it, uh, you just Lysander it up and you force them to either retreat it and get rid of energy or you just knock out their Vile Plume and say, okay, you're not going to have items for the rest of the game and now I'll just get rid of your energy that way. So... Vi uh, Lapras has a very good Decidueye Vileplume matchup, um, which is one of the main draws of the deck. Uh, Evil Tall. Evil Tall is a very, very good matchup as well. You only really ever have one energy on your active Lapras while you're setting up a bench Lapras, so they're really not going to be doing that much damage to you. You're always going to be getting rid of their energy. They're, never gonna, they're very rarely going to have double colorless on their uh, active because you play two Enhanced Hammer, so you're not going to be able to do like Y Cyclone plays or you know hit you for a lot with Evil Ball. Um, Evil Tall is a very, very good matchup. Uh, again, you also can one-shot them with Blizzard Burn. Uh, if they don't have a Fury Belt on them, you can also Ice Beam GX them. Even if they play Olympia or Pokemon Center Lady, which I actually played in my Evil Tall version, it's usually just not enough. Um, it takes a lot for them to knock you out. Uh, yeah, Evil Tall is very solid. Same with Turbo Dark. Uh, Turbo Dark, you might actually think would be bad because, you know, they have so many energy and they have so many ways to ramp en ramp up energy into play with, you know, Evil Tall and Max Lexer. But Turbo Dark is actually fine because Turbo Dark is usually going to be two-shotting you early game. And at that point, you can just constantly shift away their energy and make them only hit you for, like, 60 damage a turn, and you can just rough seize that away. Uh, so Turbo Dark is actually a very solid matchup because it takes a long time for them to one-shot you, um, which is what Lapras really struggles against, is anything that can one-shot Lapras. And Turbo Dark takes a long time to do that, so for that reason, I actually thought Turbo Dark would be a really bad matchup, uh, but then I started testing it, and then I realized it's really easy. Uh, one thing that you want to do against Turbo Dark is Lysander up a Darkrai with an EXP share on it, so they can't attach a Floatstone to it and retreat. You're forcing them to burn their Escape Ropes or Olympia. Uh, and, yeah, so you want to bring that thing up, and then if they start attaching to it, Flare Grunt it. If not, just Crushing Hammer around it, Skull Grunt, do all that jazz. Uh, you don't even need to attack their evil talls, their baby evil talls. You really just want to take three knockouts on their turbo dark, on their dark eyes. Uh, maybe even a Hoopa or a Shaman if they play it down. Um, yeah, it's actually a really good matchup, surprisingly. Uh, and now we'll go to a matchup that surprisingly is an unfavorable matchup, uh, Volcanion. So, 
A lot of people would think just because of the type advantage that Lapras actually does well against Volcanion. But without Max Lixers, oh no. Oh no, I'm so sorry guys. I don't know what just happened there. Okay, we are back. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, but we will... Uh, we were talking about Volcanion. So Volcanion is actually a really bad matchup. Um, because uh, Volcanion can one-shot you very, very easily. Plus it has very good energy recovery with Volcanion, Fisherman, Energy Retrieval, etc. So you really can't ever energy denial them enough and they can one-shot you. So without energy switches and max elixirs, which actually ramps you up, allows you to ramp up a Lapras really quickly and one-shot their threats, it's a really tough matchup. Um, so now we'll go on to Mega Rayquaza. Mega Rayquaza is a very close matchup, but it's fa it is favorable for Lapras. Um, because they need a lot to one-shot you, uh, especially a Lapras with a Fury Belt, they need a full bench with a Skyfield, uh, as well as having three energy on it, which, you know, Rayquaza can do, because Rayquaza is one of those decks that, you know, if it goes off, it goes off, there's nothing you can do, um, but if it doesn't, which is a lot of the time against this deck, because you're always going to win the Stadium War, uh, and they need three, ener uh, they need two energy attachments, you know, sometimes with a Mega Turbo, um, but they need 40 CE, they only have 40 CE, excuse me, and they need to always hit it, uh, as well as a Skyfield every turn, to be able to knock you out. Um, so, basically it comes down to, if Rayquaza goes off and it gets what it needs every single turn, it's gonna win. If not, you're gonna win. Uh, which is why it's usually favorable for Lapras, but you can lose. Uh, my only loss in Swiss was to Peter Kika, uh, playing Mega Rayquaza. Uh, I lost because off of a Sycamore to 7. Uh, I whiffed a Water Energy, uh, sorry, a Sycamore, I don't even, I don't know why I said Sycamore for 7. Uh, <laughs> I whiffed a Water Energy when I had like 4 or 5 left, um, and uh, he was able to just knock out my Lapras at that point, when I could have just Ice Beam GX and then Blizzard Burn the next turn. I also had an Enhanced Hammer, so even though he had an Olympia in hand, he told me he would have had to also get the DCE, uh, which, you know, he probably wouldn't have been able to get, because I think I had gotten rid of like 2 at the time, and then Game 3 I just drew past, which was actually the only time that I drew past with Lapras the entire uh, deck, uh, not deck, uh, tournament, excuse me. Um, so, yeah. It's usually a very favorable matchup, but Rayquaza can just do Rayquaza things. It's not a very skillful deck, but, you know, if Rayquaza just, you know, goes off, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and then finally, the last matchup that I think you really need to be careful of uh, is Mega Mewtwo. Uh, Mega Mewtwo is another one of those decks where it's, you know, it's a kind of close matchup, but because you play so much Energy Denial, especially with two Enhanced Hammer, um, it's really solid against Mega Mewtwo because they're very rarely going to be able to one-shot you. And by the time they are able to one-shot you, you can usually uh, you can usually have a Lapras ready to get rid of their energy threat. Uh, if they're ever able to get two Mega Mewtwo up with like four to five energy, so if you're whiffing all your hammer flips, uh, can't get like Skull Grunts or Flare Grunts, etc., then you're probably going to lose because you can't really deal with two huge Mega Mewtwo's, but you can absolutely deal with one Mega Mewtwo. So if it ever gets to that point where they have two, you're probably going to lose, but if not, you're in a really good spot. Um... Yeah, I think that's really all the matchups in the format that you need to be afraid of. Uh, I can't really think of anything else. Um, so yeah, this deck is really, really powerful. The only... Oh, sorry. I'll go over the auto losses. I forgot about that. You auto lose to Vestalquin and Lorantis. Those two decks, they don't even need to... Uh, they don't even need to put energy in play. They take one energy to start knocking you out. Uh, Lorantis takes one energy to get back energy. So the chances of you ever getting rid of all their energy uh, is very slim to none. Uh, plus they're going to be one-shotting you with their second attack. Uh, and Vesterquin, even if you skull grunt them uh, and get rid of all their energy in hand that they're holding, uh, they play two special charge. So unless you play Team Rocket's handiwork uh, and you're able to randomly hit the double special charge and then get rid of all their energy, you're probably going to lose. Uh, my loss in top eight actually was to Rahul Reddy, uh, who was playing Vesterquin. Uh, if I played handiwork, I actually would have had a chance to win game one because he was down to three cards in deck at one point while digging for his last special charge. Um, but I didn't play Handiwork because I couldn't find it, so I just lost. Um, so, yeah, those are your two auto-losses. But uh, I think I've gone over everything that you need to know about this Lapras deck. Uh, if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them uh, as soon as I can. Uh, and, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck. Definitely give it a try. It's a really strong deck. It's probably the best deck in the format right now, in my opinion. Uh, and it's it doesn't have a huge skill curve. You know, there are some plays that, you know require some skill. Any deck that plays t Puzzle of Time will have some modicum of skill into it, um, but as far as a Puzzle of Time deck goes, it really doesn't take that much uh, skill. 
you really just need to know what supporter to use and when. Um, besides that, you're just going to collect a ton. <laughs> so it's one of those decks that if you play it like 10 or 15 times, you'll probably be able to play it at a pretty good level. So I highly recommend you pick it up because it's easily the best deck in the format currently, in my opinion, and in a lot of other people's opinions that have picked this deck up and started to play it. Um, but yeah, thanks you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment, and sub don't forget to subscribe. Like us on our Facebook and YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, as well as Twitch. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to stream as much as possible. Uh, it's kind of hard right now because I'm sick, but once I'm done, si once I'm not sick, I'll be streaming as much as I can. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.